On today's show, the news, the matchups, the starts of the week, the boom, boom, kicker continues. Make sure you subscribe, leave us some comments, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Hey, it's football time. <laughs> I liked it. Got me people to wake up. You got me. You woke me up, Mike. Got to wake myself hey. up. Hey. <laughs> welcome into the show. Look, I now know what time it is. Thank you. You are welcome. Yeah. America. Football o'clock. Thursday episode of the show. Mike Wright, Fantasy Hitman here. Hello. Getting you ready for Thursday Night Football. Jason Moore in the building. I'm Andy Holloway. And, uh, yeah. Did things. you point, Jason? No, no. he was. I, 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 he thought I was going to give him a little room to say hello. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't do it. And he just <laughs> I, he I moved on. Yep. I just swallowed my hello and <laughs> moved on. But here we are uh, highlighting it. Yes. Uh, but I'm sure it would have been great. It would have been. Yeah, try it again. Jason Moore is here. What's Moving up? on, everybody. Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> well. Uh, Deucer's got, Alley. We've got to shut that door. Got Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, and Papa Josh in the building. Uh, for those that don't know, Papa Josh is the one that helps um, with the two or three bugs that we've ever had. And then, yeah. you know, with some of our products. And then you email him and he goes, I got you. He also runs the Discord, or as he calls it, the Discord. Yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah, the, he's but older. But he does a great job He's there. older than, he, than the rest of us. Uh, if you want to join that community, which it's it's hopping, it's popping, it's thriving, ballersdiscord.com. Papa Josh, I'll put you on the spot here. Do you Can you give us a total count of members in the Fantasy Footballers Community Discord <laughs> that we have? Of course I can. It's 44,800. Oh, brother. 44,800. Sounds like it should be 45,000 to me. That's what it, it, mm, I mean. Sounds to me like we got to get that thing up to 55,000. Yeah. 55! Jason bringing, bringing good, it today. That's good stuff. Yeah, All right, let's talk uh, fantasy football news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Aaron Jones, Christian Watson expected to play football tonight. However, feels a little sketch with Christian Watson. They expect him to be on maybe yeah. a limited amount of snaps. I would not be surprised like if it was very that. limited. I I would be trying not to play him. Yeah, I was when we were breaking down the matchup. I was pretty excited. Like, let's get Watson out there, see how he does. But yeah. You, hearing that, it's pretty difficult to put him out. Yeah, he, he is the type of dart throw where if you are in a pinch and you have to, he can Marvin Mims this thing. Sure. He can be out there for <laughs> five snaps and right. end up with a great fantasy day because of his athleticism. But I, I do agree the the right approach with Christian Watson is to not start him this week because there's also the chance that he goes out there and you know the first time he runs a full go route, it just it, it creeps Yoo-hoo. up again. Yeah, it becomes you, a stop route. <laughs> exactly. So, um, how do you feel about Aaron Jones? I mean, they're both dealing with hamstring issues. So, are you taking the same approach with Aaron Jones, or is it because he's a running back? You just don't have a choice. That's probably going to be your outcome there. I mean, what what would you do if it was like Aaron Jones starting him tonight, or just hanging tight, giving him a week and playing like Damian Pierce against Pittsburgh? I, where, where would you go there? I. would I, go upside. I'd play Aaron Jones. I think I would go Damian Pierce. The The matchup for running backs just isn't good. So the combination of him possibly being on a snap count, possibly re-aggravating the injury, and being in you know a tough matchup against the Detroit running game, uh, I, I would, I, I'm okay putting him in, you know, if, if I don't have another starting option, you know, it's, it's like Pierce, right? Like, like a Pierce level uh, option, but if I can bench both these guys, I would prefer to. I was going to ask you, you know, with Christian Watson being active, do you does that throw any shade on starting Romeo Dobbs tonight? No, not at all. The the you you want to throw on the Detroit Lions, not run on them. 
He seems to be the first read. And so when Christian Watson is fully active, not on a snap count, I think in the right matchups, which this is, I, I'll still be starting Romeo Dobbs. All right, we got a little snip-snap situation this morning. First, we had a report that David Montgomery is not expected to play. Now we've got the report that he is expected to play, which was a correction issued by, uh, I don't have the name here, but uh, that was an official report. So we're expecting to see some David Montgomery out there. Is he going to be out there in your lineup? Yeah, probably. Uh, dude, <laughs> the running back situation is dire. Okay, so, it was Tom Pelissero. Mon yeah, yeah, Montgomery's playing for me. Anthony Richardson, full practice, should be back. Austin Eckler, limited in Wednesday's practice, said okay. the issue is with his ankle right now, and it's about turning and making cuts. He can run full speed. Isn't sure about Sunday, wants to play. Oh, come on, Austin. Come on, Austin. I we need, need you. Yeah, a running back being able to turn and make cuts, though, seems pretty important to the position. I've, I've never played running back, so I can't. Well, John, uh, Joshua Kelly can't. Uh, turn and and we still have to start him sometimes so go ahead and give me Austin Eckler like literally Forrest a limited... Gump was the only one where this wouldn't have been an Im wouldn't have impacted anything yeah I mean look as long as it's a a, a, a draw play where it's yeah. right up the middle just give do that over and over I can't imagine not playing him if oh yes active. of course so, uh Jimmy Garoppolo mispracticed due to the concussion protocol we'll monitor that uh, some updates here. Debo Samuel mispractice again. I was following up on this report. I have a vested interest. And uh, I don't think he's going to be out there against Arizona. He's he's not just a rib injury. Uh, Kyle Shanahan came out and said it's a knee injury as well. Brandon Ayuk is going to be back. And they play Arizona. They're 14 and a half point home favorites. That's the last I saw. And so th this would be a game that you could potentially – miss and so I, I don't know if that downgrades your view of Brock Purdy two touchdown master but you know Debo was very very good last week and what's funny is he had the rib injury earlier in the game and then he came mm -hmm. out and he still scored a 40 yard touchdown and yeah, I he, just I, I have doubts so like if you were if you were deciding between starting somebody tonight and waiting on Debo I am I'm about 30 percent chance of him playing yeah I, I would agree I I wanted you know in preparation for um, today's episode, I wanted to make Brandon Ayuka start of the week because of the Debo injury. We've seen when one of these guys is out, the other one dominates. That being said, Brandon Ayuk is dealing with his own injuries that he's coming back from. I believe he basically hurt both shoulders in this game. Um, so the, the, the real start of the week is George Kittle. And we won't make him a start of the week on today's episode because who's not going to start George Kittle if you have him? But congratulations because he's, he's probably going to be the number one tight end this week. There are, yeah, there's there's high probability he is heavily targeted and involved, and if he gets in the end zone, he'd probably be number one. James Conner limited. It's Wednesday. We don't we don't run James Conner out there on Wednesdays. No, no that'd be silly. And then uh, Rams head coach Sean McVay said the hope is for Cooper Cup to return from injured reserve in week five. Okay. Uh, we actually have history here. We have the ability to look back at Sean McVay and what he said about Cooper Cup returning in the past from an injury. Okay. He's pretty truthful, actually. He's pretty truthful. He's within a week or two, uh, his estimation. So if it's not week five, I would think Cooper Cup's out there pretty soon. Yeah, I do think Cooper Cup will be back right away, and when he comes back, uh, my, my assumption is he's going to dominate. I mean, we've seen what Puka has done as a rookie with Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford has looked excellent, uh, far better than I think we – presumed he would look coming into this season especially missing his number one target 2-2 two -two has been good so when Cooper Cup is back on out on the field if he's healthy if he plays and doesn't re-aggravate it he's going to be a top five guy and and uh, you know I am fine trying to trade for him right now if a team is struggling they're 0-3 because they drafted Cooper Cup in the first and they didn't have him or whatever and they need a win now uh, this is the time I also and maybe you'll disagree with me here I think it might be time to to dip out on Puka um, I, I, the last two weeks, the Rams, some of the issues that they're going to deal with all throughout the year, um, are starting to manifest on the offensive side of the ball. And if Cooper cup comes back, like Tutu has been very effective. You've got Puka. You saw Higby get involved. I guess I have a little bit of concern about consistency levels for Puka. I'm not saying you can't play him, but I would not be shocked if one week, you know, Cooper cup's good every week. And then one week it's Tutu and one week it's Puka and, um, it's just something that I would be keeping in mind if I had Puka on my roster. It, it, it's certainly a, a situation where if you can sell him high, 
there is, you know, and, and capitalize on it, then so what? If he stays great, you you um, got the value out of him. But I, I don't think he's going to disappear by any means. I believe he will be pretty much a wide receiver 2-3 after Cooper Cup comes back. Bryce Young, good sign. He is ready to go. He took the field and practice on Wednesday. So, uh, Mike, how you nope. feel? How you feeling about that stream of the week? Uh, I hope you baby oiled <laughs> the, the, the steel underpants so that they they can be removed. Very without, difficult without get... chafage. Look, they they protect when they're on. Not the easiest things to get off. Right, but um, are they bolted in? No, no, oh, okay, no. I mean, but but four, if four uh, rivets, I will I will say this. If Bryce Young is starting, I formally withdraw <laughs> my Andy Dalton stream of the week. That's now, smart. That's part of the smart. reason you liked Andy Dalton was the matchup. Yes. So Bryce Young out there, do you still have confidence in no. Thielen or Chark? No. Not, I, not, I, I mean, somewhat because the matchup is so delightful, but Bryce Young has – he has looked – He's looked the worst of the rookie quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I, I think you can still throw Adam Thielen in your lineup as a PPR option. He obviously much better with Andy Dalton than he is with Bryce Young, but I, I'm not completely off, especially you know DraftKings value. He's still undervalued there. I think he either quarterback would be a would be a good value. But it's like DJ Chark is would have been a, an exciting DFS play this weekend if Andy Dalton was the quarterback, and I think if if Bryce is in. It's not that it can't still happen. It's just your your probability goes down. Less enticing. Yes. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Uh, Deucers, let us know if you hear anything else from the practice report area throughout the rest of the show. There is one uh, practice report injury that – so please tell me if my – I don't have a memory like you, Mike. All right. I don't have a steel trap, but this is uh, Tyler Higby, Van Jefferson. They didn't practice on Wednesday. They were listed with Achilles. Have you? I feel like I've never seen like Achilles. Like, oh, it's a. It's going around. It's a well, like it's usually I tore my Achilles. You can like, you, don't, you can strain it. It's, but I, it's have a you tendon. seen that? Is that common? Yeah. It, I don't know. You that mean it's, in football? Because I mean, in, Achilles tendonitis yeah, is very very common. I, I mean, as like a, a normal missing practice, like you don't miss practice for ACL. You, you know what I mean? Like but you, that you can miss. You can miss for MCL. Yeah, like just, Brandon Cooks just missed, I and then feel he like had, I haven't seen that in a while. It's I don't think it's yeah, but, it's not an common that we do see it, but it. I mean, it is worth noting though. With anatomically, those, it checks out. with those two guys out, and obviously Cooper Cup not able to come back this week. Puka and Tutu looking real good. All right, let's uh, let's move on to the forecast. Fantasy forecast. Oh boy. We're doing it again. We're playing some football in oh, London. Oh, yeah. The Falcons at 2-1 and one take on the <laughs> – is, is it the London Jaguars uh, soon? Sure. They may become that? The, uh, this is – it's an attack on the entire West Coast. Yes, it AKA is. A.K.A. best coast of the United States of America. Yes, that, it is. What are we doing here? 6.30 in the morning? Mm -mm, not on. for me. <laughs> not my football. Not my football. You want to know how this game? Pull the TiVo out of the closet and get you, this thing. You want to know how I would, I would love this game. I would love to go to London and watch this game. If I'm not in London, don't do this to me. Don't what? do this, Kyle. To me. You, you you probably know time zones. What time is the game in London for the Londoners? <laughs> That's what I'd like Kyle's to know. Frantically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, you get you report back to us. Yeah. Report back after you do the research. Falcons are two and one. Jaguars one and two. Sportsbook line here from DraftKings, Jacksonville minus three. Over-under is 43 points. This is also the game in which uh, the – is it Disney and ESPN Plus are putting the yeah. fully animated? I don't uh, know how that's going to happen, but I, I, I think we're going to watch – It's live. Yeah, we're going to watch Toy Story characters play Maybe. football, I think. I don't know if it's Toy Story characters or it's just – it's taking place in Andy's bedroom. Yes, that is the accurate – that is what it is. It's they, also two thirty. I'm interested. Two thirty p.m. in London. Oh, so that, that's a, that's a really good football time. That's also when they wake up. <laughs> um, yeah. So so we've got uh, the Falcons, and we've got a disappointing Jaguars offense that probably will be without uh, Zay Jones. So Calvin Ridley looked really really good in in week one. 
He is leading the NFL in drops. He has gone from a target share of 34% to 20% to 18%. And this is a revenge game for Calvin Ridley. Uh, do you have any wavering concerns about what you've seen the last couple of weeks? Maybe a, a lower floor is possible for this offense than we thought there was? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do have concerns. Um, the Jaguars offense and Trevor Lawrence has not looked completely in sync the way that we hoped they would come out on fire. Uh, that being said, they started slow last year and were much better the second half of the year. That could happen again. But they're playing against a very slow pace of play type of controlling team in Atlanta. So I do have worries in this game for Jaguars offensive players. All right, so through three games, the Falcons' defense is fifth against running backs, seventh against wideouts. So they've been pretty good, and part of that is slowing that game down, fewer possessions. You know, it's the mustache way. So Ridley, I, I'm sure you're playing him. ETN is in your lineup. Mm -hmm. Christian Kirk is a player you can certainly throw out there, and then Evan Ingram is Mike's start of the week. What whoa, are we doing? Whoa, whoa. Oh, no, that's on today's oh, show. Goodness. It might be, is it what I've heard. Be. That's Stay what... tuned. Oh, I really blew it. Wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm going to pick a new one. Okay. That's I'll, probably I'll for, get back to you. It's always for the best. Um, Trevor Lawrence, confidence level in starting him, or would you, like, if you drafted Trevor Lawrence, are you at the point where you're trying to play the wire? <sighs> um, No. If you drafted Lawrence, I mean, perhaps you also have Kirk Cousins, and I would play Kirk Cousins against Carolina over Trevor Lawrence. But but the wire is like, no, nah, no, nah, not I, I, not not yet, not yet. Okay. Yeah, you're not going to play the Brock Purdy, uh, you know, type of guy. That would be one of the waiver pickups. You're 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 going to still roll with Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence. Is uh, thus far for what it's worth. The quarterback 20 on the season. He has three touchdown passes in three games. That is a depressing total. He should and, have more. And he was the he was the worst. He was quarterback 32 against Kansas City and 18 last week against Houston. I don't think it gets better for him this week against Atlanta, personally. Yeah, Falcons currently 12th against fantasy quarterbacks. And just the, the way that the Falcons slow the game down, your opportunities deplete. Desmond Ritter is a, who they play at quarterback in Atlanta. Currently. He is the one of the people responsible for Drake London and Kyle Pitts not being startable. Uh, Kyle Pitts has been successful one time in I London. Was, I was going to bring it up. That was that was like the – he had 100 in a, in a touchdown, I think, right? Rookie year? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, not going to chase it. But isn't this more of a Drake game? I mean – what? Oh, because his, his last name. He's London. Oh, I mean, yeah. He's going okay. home, baby. Okay, and it's a good matchup. Uh, you know, last year this was a team that gave up almost thirty points a game to the wide receiver position. So I don't know. I think this is a. I mean, I'm not touching Drake London in London. No, you get, no, Jason. You don't get very Jason, many opportunities Jason, to do this. People are listening to us. <laughs> For advice. <laughs> Truly, though, with the advice, this is a good matchup. Two weeks ago, he was 6 for 67 and a touchdown. Had six targets this last week. Uh, Two I, for 31. No, it didn't work out great, but Drake London is a talented wide receiver. I don't think this is a guy you have to bench in a matchup that is a plus matchup, personally. You, you see him as just you're, you're not starting him. There's under. enough wide receivers out there. I don't have to. I, I feel like... You would start... Two to Atwell over Drake London, yeah, okay, yeah, I would, uh, and that's not it's not to say Drake London could not give you a game here or there, but he feels like he feels like the wide receiver equivalent of if that guy falls in the end zone, you're happy. It's like starting Matt Breida, like if he sure. doesn't score, you're probably unhappy. And that's been the case for Drake London for the majority of of the. Cortland uh, Sutton against Chicago, yeah. or okay. yeah, Cortland Sutton. I, I would play Cortland Sutton. He DJ Moore of, against Denver, yep. definitely DJ yeah. Moore. Yeah, you're not going to find a name. Okay. Christian Watson. Yeah, I'll try Watson out. Get, really, you yeah, would play get, Christian Watson on a limited snap count. What's Drake London's uh, floor? Drake London's floor is the same as Christian Watson. Zero. A goose. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Drake London's going to play 93 percent of snaps and still has a zero floor. I, look, I, I feel like every time I give fantasy advice on Drake London, it's taken as an insult to the person. Drake London would put up 1,300 yards on the right offense. He's an outstanding player. You can't catch balls that aren't thrown your way. 
you also can't catch balls that are thrown your way <laughs> right. in this offense. I mean, Kyle Pitts last week had nine targets, I think. He doesn't have catchable passes. Yeah, it, it, it's – Drake London, it's if he so scores, you'll be happy. If he doesn't score, you'll be unhappy. That is the policy with Drake London. Okay. What about Tyler Algier? Here's a player that has been getting a lot of work. Last week did not. We see him getting, obviously, more work in games where they are winning. I was curious on this line. When I saw that the Jags were minus three, I was a little surprised. So, But, Andy, you are the you are the, the linesmith. Um, what do you think is the outcome of this game? Jacksonville wins the game. Okay. It's a home game for them, Jay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Forgot. And for Drake London. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Algier, I'm trying to bench. Yeah, okay. It, I mean, that, the reason I asked is because I think that, that Tyler Algier is a player that you want to play only in games where you assume Atlanta will win the game. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. The next matchup that we're looking at, Miami, 3-0. They've been on Ooh. fire. Taking on the Buffalo Bills. That's a big boy game. Yeah, in, in a lot of ways. I mean, the Bills are 2-1, and a couple of bounce-back performances. And the DraftKings Sportsbook line has Buffalo as two and a half point home favorites. The over under is fifty four points. Sensational, <laughs> sensational. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. I mean, uh, I am, I almost am afraid of being too excited for this I game. I know. I feel like it's such a trap. I don't want to be let down. I want this to be the shootout that Vegas is expecting. Uh, you know, both teams are. On fire, the offenses, you can have a ton of confidence. Like, we're going to talk about two players in this game later on in the show. But when you look at the at, at the landscape, and we're going to have Jalen Waddle back in this game, you're starting everybody. Tua, mm -hmm. Josh Allen, Mostert, and James Cook. Um, you know, if you want to put Devon Achan out there, I don't blame you. You probably spent a ton of fab on him, and it's not like – like, as of right now, it's going to be the same recipe in the backfield, which is going to be plenty of touches for A-Champ. Yep. He's going to be started in 90% of leagues. The The leagues where he was picked up, he had to be sp spent up to acquire, and that means the team needs him. You're going to throw him out there, and uh, this isn't as bad a matchup as you think. We brought it up right now. The Buffalo Bills are allowing the highest yards per carry of any team in the league. That is the really? specialty of the Dolphins. Man. And Diggs... Tyreek, Waddle, and Gabe Davis can all be played with confidence in this matchup with the high over-under. The tight ends, it's tough because you don't really play anybody on the Miami side, and then you have two tight ends on the Buffalo side, yet the Dolphins are terrible against tight ends. Yeah, they, they were last year, and they, they were bad this year. 100% Dalton Kincaid should be started, and, and that's coming from me, uh, who has been the – you know, uh, shade tosser, the shade tosser on Dalton Kincaid's fantasy value. Um, last week, Kincaid had a massively disappointing fantasy production day. But you just look at that game, that game, the Bills just com they didn't need to pass the ball. They didn't do much in, they in, didn't in that respect. Yeah, they didn't play. They, they sacked the quarterback nine times and turned the ball, turn, you know, intercepted him four times, a pick six. Like, they destroyed Washington. So Dalton Kincaid was unused. This is a matchup where you expect, look, these teams played three times last year. They averaged 55, 55 points. Dalton Kincaid is a great play. Yeah, last week, like you said, Dawson Knox, one catch for 11 yards. Dalton Kincaid was two for three. But they I mean, weren't used, like yeah, you throw said. Them, look throw that game away. I mean, the snaps. Knox sixty percent, Dalton fifty one percent. I mean, this this is that's a that's a fake game. Throw it away. All right, the Denver Broncos at zero and three take on the zero and three Chicago Bears. All righty, we've got a DraftKings sportsbook line here. Denver minus three and a half. The over under is forty five and a half. Oh man, the disrespect what? to these defenses. What? I mean, it's forty five and a half. You expect it uh, when you go. Hey, we're gonna put. Maybe the worst team in the league against the second worst team in the league. You expect an over under of like thirty seven. This is forty five and a half because these defenses a be trash. I agree, and yet that means fantasy value is to potentially be had in this game. It's been gross to watch. Uh, to be fair to Russell Wilson, he's his numbers, other than victories, have looked okay. Uh, so I think Russell Wilson's streamable this week. I yeah. mean, the, the Bears are a really, really bad defense. 100%. And, and um, inversely, Justin Fields is streamable this week. The Broncos have been 
the worst defense in football. So you have two streamable quarterbacks here. Or would you play either of them over Jordan Love tonight? Yeah, yeah, I would. I would. I would probably play both of them over Jordan Love. Uh, what about Fields in this matchup or Geno Smith against the Giants? So we've we've brought this up a couple times this week. Here's the approach to Fields. Personally, I am playing Justin Fields over Geno Smith, over Jared Goff, over C.J. Stroud. Um, if you want to bench him for your mental health, please do. <laughs> if you need a break. If you need a break, oh, it is totally acceptable uh, to put him on your bench. And if he has a great game, go, yes, good, they've figured it out. But you don't have to deal with a th – you know, a fourth bad game in a row should it happen. Um, in the end, we want fantasy points. I think this is a matchup where he'll score them. So I'm I'm okay with uh, Justin Fields. Do you know the head coach most likely to be fired according to the odds right now? I'm going to guess the Bears since we're on this matchup. He's number two. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't be that obvious. Uh, but the most likely to be fired. Yeah, Matt Eberflus is at plus. 225 is the first okay. first coach to be fired. Rivera is third. Staley is fourth. And Peyton is now mm. ninth. What? what? <laughs> Peyton, they can't fire, yeah, fire him. That's impossible. Pey Peyton is 30, 30 seconds. Well, I mean, you got like Andy Reid and stuff, but yes. Josh McDaniels is number one. That oh, makes yeah. A lot yeah of sense. course. Uh, Khalil Herbert. This could be a game where he has more opportunities than the 11 he's been averaging. I'm not – I'm okay starting him in this game. I know that, that – Wow. That's a surprise, but that I – That is a shock. I, I think that this is an okay game to put him on the field for. This was a – he was the running back 21 in week one. Um, the opportunities have not been there at all. Seven attempts the past two weeks. I think he gets into double digits – Take that for what you will. If you want to stay away from this game, again, you probably need a break from Khalil Herbert too. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be starting Khalil, Her Khalil Herbert. One of the most shocking uh, lines here is the fact that Denver on the road, the the 0-3 Broncos who just gave up 70 points, are three-and-a-half-point favorites on the road. Uh, should they play that out and win the game, you, you're probably just not getting much from Khalil Herbert. They're splitting they're splitting too much. He's not getting work in the passing game. I, I'm – I don't. I don't want it. Okay, you're out. You're I'm out on her. I'm out. You're in, Mike. It, it makes sense, and it it just it comes down to opportunities because both Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson are talented running backs that I don't know what the heck they're doing with these with these players. Like if if your quarterback is playing as poorly as Justin Fields is, how are you giving your starting running back seven carries? The, it, the last they two get, weeks, they like, get it, into a lot of trouble taking sacks, and then you're you're not handing the ball off on second and sixteen, and third and they, sixteen. They probably should. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, I mean, and it wasn't just it's not just the blowout against Kansas City where that was a shellacking, ten to forty one, seventeen to twenty seven. I mean, the, was the final score against the Tampa Bay Bucks in week two? <laughs> Khalil Herbert has to have more than seven carries. DJ Moore through three weeks, is on pace for 62 receptions, 963 yards, and five touchdowns. Last week, he salvaged the week with a touchdown. He was 3 for 41. Yep. Six for 104 the previous week. I think you can play DJ Moore this week. Uh, yeah, DJ he's Moore. He's a flex. To me, he's better than a flex. He's, a, he's better than a flex. Yeah, I, I think this is a good matchup for DJ Moore. I mean, you obviously saw uh, the Denver Broncos give up a lot of points last week, and, and two weeks ago... You know, he had over 100 yards. He was very involved, seven targets. They're at home. I, I like I like DJ Moore this week. Javante Williams, you can start him. We'll talk yes. about him later uh, along with Russ. And then Jerry Judy, limited on Wednesday. I like, you know, he they got some things going a little bit last week. Jerry Judy was 5 for 81 in the blowout. If he plays, I'm comfortable with. Him as a – like, would you do Judy or DJ Moore? I would go DJ, DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Okay. Cortland Sutton had the best worst game last week, two fumbles, drop touchdown, and yet eight for 91 and a touchdown in the game. Previous two weeks, not so good. Uh, wide receiver 48. Well, he's, he's wide receiver 25 in week one. He's a – He's been okay. He's a flexible play. And he does seem to be a, a heavily targeted player in this offense, so – 
he he's someone that I think it would be very difficult to bench for, in this matchup. It, it's not really fantasy actionable, but did you guys see the the Judy trade whispers are starting to oh, ignite yeah. again? Oh, Marvin. <laughs> Oh, Marvin. That would be good for Marvin. Where where are Marvin the uh, destinations? Who I, cares? I, I the just, moon. Yeah, I mean, I I think we're we're just in the <laughs> – he's going to be traded to the traded moon. Traded to the moon for all that cheese. Get Marvin Mims on the field. Hi. <laughs> Show come, the moon. Come here, Jerry. <laughs> all right, we are uh, – we're moving on. Quick break. Oh, moon. Vin on. Moon. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, we're on top form. <laughs> Uh, sorry, we'll give you a break and we'll be back in a second. Just having a good time. Welcome back. Baltimore 2-1 and one, taking on the Cleveland Browns who are 2-1. and one. DraftKings Sports with Glenn Cleveland, three-point home favorites. The over-under is just 40 and a half. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, the... The injury bug has bit Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Gus Edwards, concussion. Justice Hill didn't practice with the turf toe. Rashad Bateman, the hamstring. Beckham, the ankle. Now, Gus Edwards was practicing, and I, it seems like he will be ready to go. I wouldn't play him. No, I, I'm not saying I'm excited to play him against the Cleveland Browns defense, which is shutting down everybody, but just he will be active and will get touches. And and it's not it's it's not just the offense that is uh, injured. It's worth noting here for both sides of the ball that their defense has been just completely obliterated. You you still don't have uh, Marlon Humphrey back. Was a did not participate in Wednesday's practice. So the the really good Baltimore Ravens defense is not scary right now. Yeah, and Cleveland is number one against quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends. Number two against running backs. They've been shutting everybody down, and the the Baltimore offense has not looked good, and the fact this game's in Cleveland, mm -hmm. um, even more ammo for the uh, Baltimore offense not getting it going again. When Melvin Gordon and Kenyon Drake are involved in the running game, and uh, no disrespect to Zay Flowers, but he can he's not the physical uh, force that can be the complete mover of the offense. Like In a lot of respects, him and Mark Andrews do the same stuff. Uh, yeah. And so in that, in that regard... You don't have a downfield threat right now, which is hurting the underneath stuff. Uh, Lamar Jackson has looked mediocre at best. He's doing a lot of the hold the ball, uh, evasive. He's been good for fantasy. I would I would agree that uh, he has not looked great. This offense has not looked great. Um, but the last two weeks have been yeah. over 20 points. Last week, 28, uh, 28 fantasy points. Had a, had himself a really good you know, game where he – finally ran he had 101 rushing yards that's what we want to see so I I still think you're okay starting Lamar here this isn't the matchup you want but you the know, receiving options are very scary and I think Zay Jones or I'm sorry Zay Flowers is going to have a very similar game to what he had last week which is a ton of targets a ton of receptions and they're going to be 90 percent of the time a screen pass a little tiny pass that doesn't go much so if you're in a full PPR league I think Flowers is a fine play as the pass rush is going to be coming right through to Lamar Jackson, and they're just going to try to get the ball out to Zay Flowers' hands quickly. But I don't, I don't expect a big game. Two things: one, Lamar Jackson, how many touchdowns on the year do you think he has? Passing, passing, passing. Uh, the one Mark Andrews won, and I think that's it. I'll go two, two, two who zero, got, got two zero one? touchdown games this year uh, for Lamar Jackson. Oh, passing has Flowers. Flowers got a touchdown, did he? No. Yeah. It, I don't think so. I, I'm looking. Aguilar. Yeah, okay. It was Aguilar. Because uh, he, he had two – Lamar had two rushing touchdowns last week. I'm just I'm just saying this high-flying passing offense yeah. has two passing touchdowns through three weeks. And uh, I will make a water bet with somebody. I think Elijah Moore has a better game than Zay Flowers in this one, and I would play him over Zay Flowers. Uh, Anybody want that bet? Can we – I will take that bet if it's only full PPR. Sure. Okay. Water bet. Yeah, the I, thing I do love about Elijah Moore, to speak to your belief, is that it's really been a consolidation where it's Amari Cooper and Elijah Moore. Like th that's that's where you know it that those are where Deshaun Watson's targets are going. And I love for fantasy purposes when an offense says, "Hey, here's my one, here's my two. I don't really look at 
the tight end. I don't look at my wide receiver three. I don't look like I'm just going to keep throwing it to those guys. On pace for 140 plus targets right now. Elijah Moore was nine for nine last week on his targets. It was only good for 49 yards, which is 5.4 a clip. Very similar to the game you projected for Zay Flowers. It was very similar to yeah. the game Zay Flowers yeah. had last week where he was 8 uh, for 48. 8 for 48 on was, 9 targets. They're the same or guy. Unleash, unleash Flowers, please. They won't be able to. to uh, I think Cleveland's, Cleveland's defense and pass rush I'm, is too good. I'm saying just in general. It's like Zay Flowers had success going down the field in, in college, and it's not. this is not a – looking at the size of him, Tank Dell is being used for big chunk catches. It's not just all right near the line of scrimmage. Let these guys play. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to see. I don't know how they I do it. I don't know do how it, they but... do it with Aguilar, Bateman, Beckham in, in the rotation. But um, I think what we're saying is, is that Mark Andrews, you're playing him. Zay Flowers, PPR League, mm -hmm. might be all right. Lamar Jackson, he's been in your lineup. On the other side, uh, Deshaun Watson. He was very, very good last week. He sure was. Um, he was uh, 25, 23 or 25 in a clean pocket, number one among all quarterbacks, and uh, had a had a very good week. We'll see what happens against Baltimore at home. They've been bad against wideouts, pretty good everywhere else. Watson is a player. Like, would you play Watson or Russell Wilson? I would play Watson. Watson that, that's very close. Watson is, is a – he feels like a safer floor play, but if you need a ceiling, I would go Russell. Jerome Ford, he was good last week for fantasy. He was the least efficient of the backs. There was a lot of involvement from both Kareem Hunt and Pierre Strong relative to what we would have hoped, I think, for Jerome Ford. The matchup, it's uh, – I mean, are you playing Jerome Ford yes. with confidence? Uh, and not necessarily confidence, but I'm I'm going to play him. Last week, I mean, the Tennessee is a pass funnel defense. Like that's part of what helped the success of of Deshaun Watson is you throw on that team. You cannot run on them. You can throw on them, and I so I think that they go back to Ford a bit more than they did last week. A Chan or Ford? It's one of the more popular smart, start sit questions. Oh, People that spin up on both players. Consecutive weeks on the waiver wire. I want the 55-point game. I'm yeah. going to HN. What about Gibbs tonight or Jerome Ford? Gibbs. Gibbs. Javante against Chicago. Javante. Okay, yep. so Ford is a uh, – An option. An option. <laughs> they, that's a good good way to put it. Amari Cooper, of course, you play him. And uh, I think we, we let David Njoku just – Settle down on the waiver wire. Let him be. Yeah, and, be. and I think I think you said it right. You don't need to hold on to David Njoku on your uh, – you don't have to roster two I'd tight rather ends. play Musgrave tonight. For sure. I, there's there's a handful of waiver type of tight ends I would rather start. So Njoku should be on the waivers, not on your bench. Part of that consolidation you were talking about. Yep. The Cincinnati Bengals, 1-2, and two, taking on the Tennessee Titans, who are 1-2. and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cincinnati, two-and-a-half-point road favorites. The over-under is 40-and-a-half. Jason – Tell me why you were shaking your head. I was shaking my head because this is such a good matchup for quarterbacks, and Joe Burrow has been not himself. It's one of those things where last week we basically told everybody, start whoever you have over Joe Burrow. We were we were blessed because he was the second Monday night game, where it was like, you probably don't have an option, and so you need to start someone else. That worked because his game was putrid. Didn't even score 10 fantasy points as a quarterback. Now it's hard. Now it's really, really hard because in general, if this was an average to below average matchup, I would say this is someone who should be on your bench, certainly not on the waiver wire, but on the bench while he works through his calf issue, there are other guys that you could throw out ahead of him. But with the Tennessee Titans, we just talked about it. They are a pass funnel. You don't run on them, but you do pass on them, and you pass on them pretty easily. So it's like this should be what this heals be the fine. calf. Yes. This should be fine. Yeah, I think, you, I think you start Joe Burrow. I would start him over – Trevor Lawrence. And that the, was where I was going to go, and I, I'm in agreement with you. Yeah, but it's scary. It's scary because he's been so bad, and it's it's not his fault. He's not bad, but he's he's playing through this injury, and it clearly shows. Okay. Uh, Higgins, he's had uh, the roller coaster season, but you keep playing Higgins. Yes. Oh, we're back. This is the good week. Oh, you red bad light, week. Red light, green week, light. Bad yeah. week. Now we're in little, a good week. A little bit of a ping pong situation. Um, 
Mixon, good week last week. I mean, you're, you've kind of got some core players you're playing on the Cincinnati side, and I think you can do it with confidence. Jamar Chase was heavily targeted. Welcome back to the league, Jamar. On the other side, we've we've talked a lot about it. It's been pretty gross. I, You know, the defense for Cincinnati looked ferocious last week. The Tennessee matchup has been great for defenses. So I think Cincinnati's in play, but... Oh, yes. I mean, is it Derrick Henry and then Hopkins? Like, Hopkins or Thielen? Thielen. Yeah, I don't know that I want to start DeAndre Hopkins, to be honest. I mean, this is... We, we talked about this in the draft season. The bottom five and pass rate over expectation, which seems like what Tennessee Titans will finish this season as, they usually have their wide receiver one not be a top 36 wide receiver. And that's basically what we've seen. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins' best week this year was the wide receiver 30. Then he was the wide receiver 61, then the wide receiver 59. He's still the first read. He's still the, the, the main guy in this offense. It's just not an offense you want the passing game on, and certainly not against the Bengals. So I'm not starting Hopkins. That's uh, maybe why nobody went running after DeAndre Hopkins in the yeah. offseason. Uh, do we have to talk about this game anymore? Nope. Okay. Thank that's, goodness. That's cool. The Rams are 1-2. and two. They take on the 2-1 and one Indianapolis Colts, the DraftKings Sportsbook line. It's moved. Los Angeles. The Rams, minus one. The over-under is 47. Is that uh, – well, it opened up with the Colts' as favorites. So is it a reflection of just the betting, or is it a reflection of the quarterback being more secured as Anthony Richardson? Uh, you, you think so, the line moved negatively because the presumption now is that Anthony Richardson will be the I'm quarterback? I'm merely asking that sure. question. Uh, usually when a line moves significantly, it is due to a primary – uh, player that is not a running back, uh, changing health, and so I would I would imagine that's what it is. Last week, uh, the Rams could not punch it into the end zone, so you know you help, you saw Puka Nakua have an okay game. Tutu Outwell looked pretty good. Kyron Williams played every single snap for the Rams. I think, obviously, Kyron is locked into your lineup. I think yes. Puka is locked in. I think Tutu's a flex guy. Uh, is Stafford in the stream consideration, or are we just yeah, are we yeah, trying to avoid it? No, 100%. He is, he is a streamable option this week. Um, I think, you know, when you look at Stafford versus um, Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy has the most the, – the San Francisco 49ers have the highest implied team total this week. That's what you want, and that's why Purdy was a good start. But now with the question marks for Debo – the question marks for uh, Ayuk's shoulders. I think I'd throw Stafford in ahead. This game yeah, has okay. a surprisingly good pace of play, and I think there will be enough plays in here where, like you said, Tutu is a flex. I think Tutu is a really fine play. Like I, I will probably start him if I have him. Puka should be awesome. I want to talk about Anthony Richardson because we haven't had the occasion to do so. Week one, he was the quarterback four. Then in week two, he scored two times on the ground in the first few minutes of the game yep. and was knocked out with a concussion. He was going to be a top four quarterback. Yeah, so, so I think he's kind of hiding, and then he missed the next week. Mm -hmm. So is Anthony Richardson one of those players where maybe he hit the waiver wire, um, maybe he's not even in, in people's minds to start this week, and yet maybe he should be? Should oh, absolutely yeah. be started. Uh, it's a concussion. If if he's back, it's this is not a lingering leg issue. Uh, which is what we need from Richardson. We need him to be running out there. He's he's running like a maniac. I mean, I mean, thirty thirty seven pass attempts though in week one. Yes, you, yeah. you you did like to see that, and he was already he already had ten pass attempts when he got knocked out of the game. Um, he doesn't hit him being active doesn't change your view on Pittman, right? Or no putting him out there, Zach no. Moss. Nope it, nope, it doesn't change anything for me. I, I don't like it. This is an easy matchup because Richardson is immediately into my lineup if he's back. Moss is actually getting running back volume. The The matchup is average, so that's fine. And then Michael Pittman's the only wide receiver with eight-plus receptions in all three weeks so far. Those 37 passing attempts in week one, it turned into a massive target share for Michael Pittman. This game has sneaky shootout potential. It's in a dome. Mm -hmm. The Colts are second-highest no-huddle rate, fifth in plays per game with Shane Steichen, and the Rams are third in pass rate over expectation. Yeah, baby. This could be a, a bigger game than we... This is the surprising over. This is the one that's like, oh, man, 
I didn't see this game being a high flying fifty five yeah, point. It total. got bet up from forty five to forty seven on the over under as well. So uh Josh Downs was the hungry for more. I'm curious to see how he performs in week four here. I'm probably not putting him in my lineup unless I'm desperate. I, I, I was gonna bring up Josh Downs is the one player that is affected by Anthony Richardson coming back. Not that he is not going to get enough targets. He had a decent game in week one uh, with uh, Anthony Richardson being there. But Anthony Richardson is going to run the ball more. That short yardage stuff is much more Gardner Minshew style than it is Anthony Richardson. All right, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 2-1 and one take on the New Orleans Saints who are sitting at 2-1. and one. The DK Sportsbook line is New Orleans minus what? three. Oh, Andy's almost upset of the week. That line is surprising even to me. And I'm a I like Jameis. That line is surprising to me, but in the other way. I don't think Tampa Bay goes and, and scores well in, in in New Orleans at all. But uh tell us why, Andy. This well, is Well, I mean it's an over under of forty. This game is not projecting to be a, a high scoring affair. I just don't have the confidence that Jameis Winston will string enough consistent drives together to compete with Tampa Bay. I mean, I, Tampa Bay just lost their first matchup. It was against Philly. Philly's defense stepped up. I still thought that they had some some good drives in that game. Um, you know, you've got a pretty simple fantasy outlook for Tampa. I think the only real big conversation piece, like Mike Evans is in your lineup. Rashad White is an RB2 to flex but <laughs> but he's probably being played he's already rb21 on the yeah, year yeah, yeah. 19 opportunities a game uh jason just you know told everybody to trade for josh jacobs due to opportunities and he's not shot white is not as talented as josh jacobs but he is getting targets in the passing game so i think he's a flex rb2 but the chris godwin question i mean this is a new offensive coordinator with a new quarterback you're running a new offense and chris godwin thus far I thought I saw on the field a less than Chris Godwin last yeah. season. Mm. Well, and it made and sense. And now I'm wondering off, if that's where we're at. It made sense coming off of his. He had a really bad knee injury. Yeah, he tore his he, ACL. He, but but it wasn't just a clean ACL. It was, it was a multi ligament thing that he was coming back from, and it was like we didn't expect him to be out to start the season. This season, I was excited to see Chris Godwin back to full strength. I mean, he's only 27 years old. It's not like he's. Um, you know, this is year two recovered, but I agree with you, Andy. He doesn't he doesn't look like pre ACL injury Chris Godwin. He is not the first read. That was what made Chris Godwin good. He was a PPR machine. You, you know, one of those guys that's 150 plus targets. And right now, there is a 150 plus target pace player on this team, and it's Mike Evans. So uh, Chris Godwin is uh, just a flex play right now. I think that he's one of the toughest players to bench because the name has so many years of history and you might have some players that are performing like a good example would be. And I think it's really a fair question Tutu Atwell or Chris Godwin. Right. Tutu Atwell is definitely a better start right yeah, now. Yeah. And that that's just mind blowing. I think for, and, and it hurts fantasy emotions when you stare at your lineup and you're like, man, I should have Chris Godwin right there in my flex, but that might be the worst decision versus playing a two to hour or any other emerging why you know elijah moore could outperform chris godwin this week easily yeah yeah it really is true chris godwin isn't someone that i think you have to bench he's still a, a quality wide receiver great hands involved in the offense but he is a he's a flex option that you just need to look at your you know if, if across the field if i had chris godwin and i had michael thomas I'd i think michael i'd play thomas. michael thomas he's he's had more targets on the season and I think it's the the I would rather play the guy at home favored against the weaker defense. Not that the Buccaneers have a bad defense, but they aren't the Saints defense. The Saints defense is outstanding. Chris Olave's start to the season, three games, is what? Is is it a disappointment? No. No. Uh, it's No a, top twelve finishes. His usage is elite. His production is fantastic. He just doesn't have touchdowns. I mean, he's, is this the week? He's can we get a Mike Wright uh, touchdown guarantee for Chris Olave with his old pal we Jameis? Did, we did see thirty-one percent of the targets once Jameis oh, was I in. Oh, I like that. That was the target share to Chris Olave. Juicy. Uh, I will not guarantee a touchdown, but I will guarantee bark, that you bark, should. Bark, you bark. do it. Go for it. I Jay. guarantee okay, it. Okay, good. There's a touchdown here for 
for uh, Chris Christian Olave. Yes, there we go. Uh, the, Chris Chris Olave has been fantastic. He's, he's averaging one, hundred yards a game, right? Yeah, he's yeah. over oh, three hundred yeah. <laughs> in three games. No top twelve finishes, but he's the wide receiver fourteen on the year. Yeah, ex without a touchdown. I mean, he, you can't be disappointed with what he's done. He's going to keep getting better. Um, obviously, the quarterback situation. We don't know if it's an improvement or a, a negative going to Jameis Winston. Hopefully, Jameis Winston starts this game off with a pick six or two. And then you can have Christian Olave dominate. Alvin Kamara is back, baby. He's back, and I would play him. Oh, for he's sure. He's back, and he's the only running back I would play. Yep. Yeah, you're in not New gonna, Orleans you're this not, week. Yeah, because you don't know for sure yet if Kendra Miller has that running back two role that has been you know forever in. Th there's been a quality RB two. You know when when you had uh, uh, for for years like. Ingram. Ingram and uh, yeah, Kamara. And yeah, and, and I, I think that there will be a good role there, but we don't know whose it is, if it's Kendra Miller's yet or if it's Tony J Jones right now. So I'm not starting Kendra Miller. Alvin Kamara, I think everyone who has him is like, oh, yes, finally. And also, I'm not starting Rashad White. I know you say, like, he's okay, but – Okay, well, we got to get names then because uh, there are running back needy teams like my League of Records team. I would be very happy to start Rashad White. I would start Jalen Warren over Rashad White. Okay, with the Houston matchup. Absolutely. What about um, Elijah Mitchell against Arizona, hoping that they game script clean it up? Mitchell was involved last week. That that one is a that one is tough enough where I think I would start Rashad White. But I mean, you don't, li you don't like the matchup and and you don't like the production, and so. Yeah, two of his three weeks, he hasn't hit six fantasy points. This is a it's terrible matchup. T. Matchup. Higgins of running backs. Yeah, the, and it's a terrible, terrible matchup. Would you go Kenneth Gainwell against yeah. Washington? Yeah. All right. All right. We we have a uh, a bit of a news update. Jalen Waddle has cleared protocol, so he is going to be back out there. We were expecting it, but it's good to hear an official report. One more matchup today before our starts of the week. The Commanders are two and one. The Philadelphia Eagles are 3-0. and They're at home. This is not going to be an almost step set. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has Philadelphia minus 8. The over-under is 43. Uh, if I could be – look, I'm going to ask everybody, say a prayer for Sam Hill. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for his it's family important. because this is going to be a bloodbath. I Look, Sam Hill has been a huge disappointment. Uh, I, I started to believe. I love the intangibles, but – he has shown now through three weeks that he he just can't resist holding the football. He is Justin Fields in that football, holding it too long. The stat is unbelievable. The NFL record, which ru this this record ruined the career of David Carr. David Carr took 76 sacks <laughs> once. He took 76 sacks and his career was over. Sam Howell's on pace for 107 sacks. He is getting demolished. Jalen Carter is a superstar. Fletcher Cox, the off, the defensive line, Hassan Reddick. Like I said, say a prayer for Sam. Did you? He won't have to hold the ball very long. That is the benefit. Like If we're saying, hey, he's holding it too long, he won't have to. It's like a couple seconds, and then he will be on his back. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you see um, Rivera's quotes on Sam Howell? He came out and was 100% completely behind him, supported him, said that there's, there is there is no uh, you know question. He's the starter, the, the, that he really likes what he's seen from Hal on the season, that it was a bad game, and we're moving on. And he got that script from Robert Sala? Yes, yes. No, look, I – He's a – for all – Sam Hal in the right Howell's matchup a rookie. is fine. He's a sophomore, but he's a rookie. The problem is, is you have these very talented pass-catching weapons. People want to play in fantasy, and they can't. And, like, it, I, I was digging into this. I see it in our show doc, too. Like, Jahan Dotson's running more routes than any player on this entire team, and he's top 12 in the NFL in routes run, and yet they don't throw him the football. They're, they're dumping it down to tight ends, to Antonio Gibson for low-value touches. They need to get the ball down the field or get it into the hands of their playmakers. Terry McLaurin always makes plays when targeted. Jahan Dotson would if he could just get more targets on these routes run. None of that, I don't think, is going to happen this week. Now, the Eagles, by the numbers, they look like they've struggled against quarterbacks and wide receivers. You know, it, it, To me, it's a mirage from the first two weeks. They showed against Tampa Bay mm -hmm. what they actually what their defense is all about. They're at home in this game. 
uh, I just look. I I don't see a path for Washington to compete. Yeah, I, I I agree. This this should be a pretty one sided affair. I mean, it's over a touchdown favorite for the Philadelphia Eagles, and these teams look headed in different directions. The Eagles' offense hasn't hasn't looked great to me. It is a three and zero offense who's putting up uh, good enough points, and yet to the eyeballs, it's like I'm still really disappointed in the Eagles. But that just means they have room to get better with the new offensive coordinator. Um, I you know on the Eagles side. There's not many questions. I think you know now you have to start DeAndre Swift until proven otherwise. You yeah. have to start their two wide receivers. And you're not going to bench Dallas Goddard either. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward Eagles decision. Fun tweet by Ian Hart. It's DeAndre Swift's yards per rush this year are 6.8. Jalen Hurts' yard per pass this year, 6.9. Nice. So, not nice. you know, Jalen Hurts is number eight at quarterback right now. And that's what you're feeling. You're watching the game and you're feeling 6.9 yards per pass. And if you're unfamiliar with what your uh, yards per pass should be, it should not be 6.9 <laughs> yards per pass. We we need to be up like 11 here. It really feels like the games have looked like a struggle on offense for Jalen Hurts passing the football, but then they always hit on one or two big plays. So it's like struggle, 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 bomb, touchdown, his day's made, we're happy. But it's it, like you said, there's room, there's room for them to improve. Washington's been bad against wideouts. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Uh, Smith finally had a down game, but you put him in your lineup. And, you know, Kenneth Gainwell's the hardest of, of the uh, decisions to be made, but he's going to be out there about 50% of the time. There's going to be some opportunities. And so I think, uh, I think it's Eagles into your lineups. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. All right, we're into the starts of the week. Some confidence picks for your team. Looking for those great matchups and opportunities. I'll kick it off at quarterback. I'm going with, and it's been a long time, I think, since I've said this name in this segment. But Oh, man. I'm going. Did you just read it for the first time? Mm-hmm. Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm getting nuts with Russell Wilson this week, taking on Chicago. Um, he's been completely fine for fantasy. Uh, on the year, he's the quarterback nine, and this matchup is is great. He, they're favored. Chicago's a disaster on the defensive side, and um, I think he can be a top twelve guy this year. I, he's got the weapons. You talk about hungry for more with Marvin Mims, and Judy is back, and Sutton is performing, and and you have opportunities here with Javante getting going. Um, the Bears thirty first in yards per attempt given up, thirty first in expected points per pass attempt. The, this is the week to start Russell Wilson. I'm, I'm making him my start. I don't blame you at quarterback. Oh, how dare you wince and then give give me this start of the week? Are you talking I'm going to wince right back. Okay, you wince right back. And this isn't Carson Wentz. This is Daniel Jones in Seattle. I like what's going on, boys. Yeah. It's nasty. It's, yeah, give me that drop. Um, Daniel Jones, probably sitting on your waiver wire after last week's poop fest um, You know, against San Francisco on Thursday. He's back on primetime, but this time... He is at home. He is favored. He is in a 47-point over-under, which is tied for the third highest of the week. And he's playing against Seattle. You might remember Seattle from such movies as Andy Dalton just went ham on them <laughs> last week. Uh, they rank 28th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to quarterbacks, 30th in expected points per pass attempt. And Daniel Jones is a boom-bust player. We we I, I said in the draft season, do not draft Daniel Jones. He was the quarterback nine last year. He's going to be great in so many weeks. Do not draft him because you're not playing him every week. He's a streamer and pick him up in the right matchups. I don't know, like last week when he was the quarterback one on the week, the best quarterback against Arizona the, the week before this this past weekend. This is a good matchup. He should be good. He runs the ball. Um, I'm not afraid of the Seattle defense at all, so I, I think you could start Daniel Jones. And I will say I am not – Concerned with the injuries that San Francisco currently has, I will have Brock Purdy as my start of the week. He is an underrated floor play. They have the highest implied team total of the week, 29 points. He has two-plus passing touchdowns in seven of eight career regular season starts. If Debo is out, George Kittle is going to eat. Like he's As long as he has two of his guys, which there are four, and I'm counting Christian McCaffrey as a pass catcher, then I will still be playing Brock Purdy against Arizona. My running back start of the week is the most unheralded star of the season at the running back position so far. <laughs> James Cook is my start of the week. It's, 
It's unbelievable. James it, Cook is is truly dominating is at the running back so position. Good. He is he's averaging um, six point one yards per carry on the year, and it's like, oh well, that's you know, on fourteen point seven attempts per game. So he's getting the work. It's a Miami matchup with the high over under. He's the RB fourteen through three weeks, despite not scoring a he's, touchdown. He's the Chris Olave right now of he, the running back he position. He is. He is. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like I said, the highest over under of the week. The Miami run defense has allowed a first down on 34% of the rush attempts. There's too much to stop with Buffalo. And Cook, look, he can be an RB1 this week. I'm expecting big, big, big things. Yeah, uh, for me, I want to give you the confidence to play James Conner in a terrible matchup. Okay. James Conner is going on the road against the San Francisco 49ers who have shut down everyone. And so you might say, man, I, I don't know if I can man, really throw him in really my lineup. Throw him in my lineup. Right, and you might sound just like that. Uh, look, the Cardinals are going to get blown out. The Cardinals uh, will will lose. The How San Francisco you? 49ers defense How dare you? is good. They will mostly shut down the run game. But here's the thing. James Conner is matchup proof. He is 100%. It doesn't matter if we're going to win or lose. His opportunities per game are good enough to, to have him in your lineup. I want to read you something. This is last year. His running back uh, weekly finishes 20 Five running back 14, 6, 4, 12, 5, 15. Now I want to read you whether they won or lost those games. Oh, I know where this is going. Win, or I'm sorry, loss. <laughs> oh, the joke is. Uh, well, because it went loss, win, loss, 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 loss. It don't matter. Yeah, the Cardinals are going to get smoked, but he is getting 20 oh, opportunities a game. You've got to put them in your lineup. Don't bench them because of a bad matchup. What happens if Arizona wins in San Francisco and they beat Dallas, San Francisco in back to back weeks with Joshua Dobbs? What do you What do you do? <laughs> I mean, there's got to be something you do for the words that you just put out there into the world. Uh, what? I mean, I want you to. I'll I want do you ten to, push I want you to run a mile. Whoa, that's okay. I'll do twenty five <laughs> push ups. Jeez, a mile. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, Mike, who's your? You ever ran a mile? It's terrible. Uh, I'm going with Javante Williams, Denver Broncos. He gets to play the Chicago Bears, and it has been a uh, not great start here for John, uh, Javante Williams, but the utilization is there. He's averaging an opportunity on 57% of his snaps. That's third best among running backs. Seeing a target every 14 snaps, that's better than Jameer Gibbs. He just has not <laughs> scored. That the, the problem is, is – the per snap analysis is the problem, right? Because he's only getting forty two percent of the snaps. Right, but he's he is still he is seeing more opportunities, far more opportunities than Samaj P. Ryan. Uh, as you of think right his, now. Uh, you think he's going to get going? I do. And with the, uh, it's in, the coming off the injury, the and, Bears the Bears matchup thirty what thirty first because you no one could be thirty second in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the running backs. Uh, after after the Denver Broncos have secured that title for rest of season. But the Bears are second worst, so I think that Javante gets it going this week. I'm, we're going to get a tutty. I thought about pivoting out of my wide receiver start of the week after the Andy Dalton, Bryce Young news. But, uh, you know, Bryce Young was a rookie. He, he's going to progress over time, and the Minnesota matchup's too good to resist. Adam Thielen. Ooh, what? Adam Thielen is, uh, look, it's volume. He's getting piles and piles of volume. They don't have better options on this team, and they don't need them. Adam Thielen's getting open on a regular basis. He's getting open uh, – in the flat, he's getting open down the field. Uh, that's the area where Bryce Young has struggled, is being able to connect with him. I mean, there were plays two weeks ago where Adam Thielen would have had a much bigger day had Bryce Young been able to connect with, with him once he got open down the field. Uh, so Adam Thielen against his former team, coming off of a big week. His last two weeks for Adam Thielen, just to refresh your memory, 18 for 199 and 2. This is a game where Minnesota is going to put up points. And there's a game where Minnesota is going to give up points because that's been the recipe. Kirk Cousins is the number one or number two in fantasy, depending on your scoring system, and they're 0-3. That tells you that they are giving up points on the back end. Adam Thielen's my start of the week. Yeah, I don't I don't mind it. My start of the week is you a did more it. explosive player. I did do wow. it. I'm you going, said you weren't going to do it. I'm going Gabe the Babe. Gabe Davis. I want pieces in this game. You just if need I... to stay away from him so he can keep doing what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just stop getting in his corner. And what he's been doing is scoring touchdowns like he do. He's got back-to-back -back weeks with a touchdown. He's been solid so far this year. 
he shows up in big games. Everyone remembers the playoff game where he was four touchdowns and one of the best performances of all time. This game has the highest over-under of the week with 54 points. You know, Josh Allen, he's completing a career-high 73% of his passes. Part of that is because Gabe Davis is catching 60% of his passes, which is a career-high for him. So I, I, I think that if he's on my roster, like if Gabe Davis is on my bench, in this matchup, I, I want pieces of this game. I would I would find a way to get him in my lineup in case this is one of his 150 and you know two touchdown type of games. I'm going with Jacoby Myers as my start of the week, wide receiver from the Las Vegas Raiders. You want to talk about funneling targets to just two players? The, the Las Vegas Raiders. So Devontae Adams, absolutely incredible, currently seeing a 40% target share uh, on the season. Jacoby Myers, uh, he's over 30%. Like He is absolutely being utilized. He's looked apart every week. He's, I don't know what New England was thinking. They made a huge mistake here. Week one, nine for 81 and two, misses the week from a concussion. Right back to 12 targets, seven for 85. Uh, it, a player seeing a 31% target share next to Devonta Adams is absolutely wild. Oh, yeah, they play the Chargers, 31st in schedule just at fantasy points to the wide receiver position. I'm getting Jacoby into my lineup. Luke Musgrave is my tight end start of the week. Luke Musgrave tonight against mm. the Lions. Uh, okay, he's seeing okay. – it was from Kyle. If you don't like it, put that, <laughs> put that on him. It was mediocre. Uh, he's seeing downfield targets. Um, the Lions are terrible against tight ends. And uh, you saw Johnny Smith and Kyle Pitts, who combined for 17 targets. Pitts with eight. Johnny with nine. So if you want to – what are if you, you want to like really cry yourself to sleep on the Kyle Pitts narratives, the we highest, got a new one. Johnny Smith getting more targets. Highest than Kyle drafted Pitts. tight end of all time. What are we doing? For no reason, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Luke Musgrave is my start of the week. All right. You're going with a rookie. I'm going with a rookie tight end, uh, Sam Laporta, uh, playing in Green Bay. Sure. He's just, it, this is simple. You're staying in the flames. If you picked him up and, you know, you had someone else that, you was struggling like David Njoku. You you just keep rolling Sam Laporta out there. He's the tight end two right now on the season. Uh, most receptions ever for a rookie tight end through three weeks. His 37% target share last week, that was the third highest ever in a game for a rookie tight end. He's he's a trustworthy target of Jared so, Goff right now. So let, let, let's put that one to the test because I think most people are, are wanting to play him, but let's let's make it more consequential. Are you playing Laporta? over everybody but Kelsey. Because if he's your start of the week here, he's the tight end two on the week, Waller, um, Andrews, Kittle. Can't play him over Kittle. No, I'm not playing him over Kittle. I'm not playing him over Andrews either yet. Um, Hawkins, and then uh, and, Hawkinson, and Hawkinson okay. would be ahead of him, and then it's Laporta. So, so I Waller. would play him ahead of Waller. Okay. Mike, your start of the week. It's easy E, baby. What? What he's, a surprise. He is back, Evan Engram, who's just cruising oh, along. He's you cruising. got me. He's. Cr you thought I was going to change? I thought you were going to change. Yeah. You said you were going to change. I did, and then I changed back. Who? <laughs> tight end five I on the year. I can't quit. Tight end five without a touchdown. The tight end position, and he is tight end five. Uh, third in tight end targets, receptions, and receiving yards, and the Falcons were laported this past week. Evan Ingram, it, look, Zay Jones uh, likely to miss again. That's more targets for Evan Ingram. Keep playing him. All right, thanks again to our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport is high-performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed Boom Boom week, Kicker boom, of boom, boom, the Week. Kicker. Leg Brosif took care of business in a cage <laughs> oh, yeah. match. <clears throat> I heard a deep, menacing voice presenting a real Sophie's Choice. <laughs> Save the city or live without bidets. Running on pure endorphins, I save both widows and orphans outwitting the Colts, Matt Gay. Um, it's masterpiece. Right? I mean, In incredible work. Yeah. One day they will 
they will put together all of my works in the Smithsonian, like a Shakespearean masterpiece. They'll put him in the Smithsonian, Mike, but then he won't visit the Smithsonian. Oh, I'd be too bored. He's too bored to go to a museum and stare at something. <laughs> Jason is the only person who will, they they would throw a party, have a brand new exhibit, yeah, all dedicated to him, and he would not go. No. Oh, I would show up for the party. It hors d'oeuvres. Of course, it's well, a then mu- I'm at the party. It's, it's a museum. I haven't been to a museum so wait, with hors d'oeuvres yet. This I would means love. Jason an- needs a snack bar at a museum. That's yes. the only thing that's missing. You put a nice little uh, snack bar right in the center of the museum. I'm gonna love that museum. <laughs> you, you just want to go to snack bars. <laughs> yeah. That is it for today's episode. More matchups tomorrow. The fantasy face-off and the wheel of shame returns. Oh, boy. Enjoy the game tonight, everybody. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.